I started to implement these rules and these practices for other classes as well and my grades like skyrocketed hey guys welcome back to my channel or welcome if you guys are new here in today's video I am going to tell you all how to study for anatomy and physiology there are a couple of videos like this already out there but personally I feel like they just don't really work for my learning style I came a really long way in anatomy and physiology I literally was below failing like I literally had a 40% which is an E to getting A's and B's this semester it took a lot of hard work and dedication and organization but I finally made it here if you guys want to know more about my struggles with anatomy and physiology then be sure to watch my video which is my first year nursing school recap because I talk all about it in there this is just what personally worked for me that doesn't mean it's gonna work for everybody but I hope it works for at least a couple of you I am a very hands-on learner I'd like things to be very interactive that's how I personally thrive and learn to my fullest potential and this is what's worked for me so I have my iPad here. I've actually written a couple of notes because I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything in this video because there's quite a few things to cover as you guys can see right there. It's very messy. Yes, that's a band-aid. We're not talking about it. The way this video is going to be structured is I'm gonna first of all talk about what I did pre-lecture, during the lecture, post-lecture, how I studied for exams, and then just finally some tips and tricks, things that I picked up along the way that I think would be very, very beneficial to you guys. Let's start off with pre-lecture. It may seem so excessive to even think about the content before you even sit through the lecture, but I promise you guys this makes a really big difference. I would just basically look over the slides either the night before or on the bus on the way to school or even like 20-30 minutes before class started just to get familiar with the content that I was about to be presented. My professors would also put little questions in their slides that they would answer in class. I found personally that it really helped if I went out of my way to find the answers to those questions before even attending the lecture. That way I would sit in class and I would see what other students said, what my prof said, how they explained it. Those questions that were on the slides came back on my exams as either fill in the blank or short answer questions so I feel like I really did benefit from looking over the slides beforehand. I actually have the online version of the textbook so I could pull it up on my phone, my iPad, my laptop, wherever I was. Just quickly search through whatever chapter or topic I was on and just read it to get more information. The other thing that I would do, which I wouldn't always do this, this is more so something I did post lecture, but watch videos. So these videos will kind of already introduce you to the topic beforehand and then when you sit in class the content is just being reiterated and you're also just learning a couple other things here and there. It seems excessive, I know, but it really doesn't take that much time whatsoever and it makes a huge difference to how you learn the content, how you retain the content, and how you understand it in general. Moving Moving on to what I did during the lecture. It is so important that you guys attend your anatomy and physiology lectures. I don't care what anyone says, go to them, even if attendance isn't mandatory. I don't care if you're dreading it, if you don't want to go, like go. It's okay to miss a couple of classes, it's okay, like I get it, but go if you can. When you're in class, you want to make sure you pick a good spot. I'm not saying sit right in front where you're literally kissing the professor, like I'm not saying that, but I'm also saying don't sit all the way in the back. Personally, I feel like the best spot to sit in class is like around the middle so the projector is like basically right in front of you. Also I try to sit towards the end of the aisle so it's easy for me to leave but that's just a personal preference. And then I would turn my phone off. This is like so not me of a thing to do but Snapchat is the devil. If I have Snapchat on my phone and I'm trying to study it's not gonna happen. So I would just shut my phone off completely. Obviously my laptop does get texts but my group chats are all in do not disturb and I really just have it there in case of any emergencies. If anyone texts me, if anyone needs me to respond to them right away. I'm able to still reply, but I'm not going to be distracted from my phone and all that stuff. So let's talk about note taking. Note taking is something that I struggled with because in high school we never really had to take notes and if we did the teacher would just kind of be like, okay guys this is an equation, I'll give you guys some time to just write it down. But it was never like they're gonna talk and you kind of have to just gauge what's important and it's and what's not. So I didn't really know how to write notes. For a while I tried to do the whole split screen where I had the slides on half of the screen and then like a Google Doc open on the other half but that just wasn't the most efficient way and I learned that after a few months. It was really easy to get unorganized with that having two different things open. So what I started to do and what a lot of people do is just download the slides and open the presenter notes at the bottom and just type in whatever the prof is saying for that slide. It just works a lot 
lot better. You have everything in one spot. That's basically all I would do during the lecture. And I would also kind of take note of if there was something I didn't really understand, if I found something hard right off the bat. The lecture's done, you sat through it, you did it, but you're definitely not done. You have a couple things to do post-lecture. This is what I did, really helped. Also, I'm sorry if you hear screaming. There's kids just running around ever since this quarantine thing. They're screaming like all hours of the day. There's nothing I can do about it, so I'm sorry. But post-lecture, this is mostly when I would watch my videos just this is mostly when I would watch my videos to reiterate what I just learned in the lecture. Like I mentioned, sometimes I would watch them beforehand, but the majority of the time I would watch them after the fact. I would mostly watch crash course videos. And then the second thing that I would do post-lecture, which is the most important thing ever, is make flashcards. There are people who really work well with like paper, having printouts, having study guides in hand, and they can learn from that, and they can learn from writing their own flashcards. Personally, that doesn't work for me, so I use Quizlet. Quizlet is just an online website for flashcard making. You guys have probably heard of it. It's honestly so popular. They also have an app which is great because you can study on the go. Super easy. I use Quizlet to make my sets right after each lecture. So you can learn the Quizlets one time through while you're making them but I don't do that because I kind of need a break from after just sitting in that lecture. So this is really just mindless studying. I listen to a podcast, I talk to friends, I watch videos, and I just make my sets. And when I'm making my sets, I basically copy the slides plus any extra notes that I took in class or anything the prof said. So if the entire lecture is condensed into flashcards, this is just the best way to go for me. The same day, study that set of flashcards. If you don't, it's fine. It's just not very smart because anatomy is so dense. Things are gonna catch up to you and then you're gonna be like great what am I supposed to do now I should have said this in the beginning of the video I just totally forgot but my professor for anatomy and physiology told me when you're studying anatomy and physiology you can get away with memorizing the anatomy on Quizlet you need to memorize the different types of joints like just a list and what they are or if you need to memorize the cranial nerves you can do that it's super duper easy to just memorize the anatomy and get on with your day but with the physiology don't you even dare just memorizing it that's not gonna work I tried that with my first anatomy and physiology class I was like I can memorize the physiology nobody cares I don't know what I'm memorizing but it's fine no sis I went to get tested on it and I knew nothing so physiology make sure you know all the different like ion channels that are opening all the mechanisms everything that's going on you need to know it from top to bottom understanding it versus memorizing it was just the way to go now let's talk about how i studied for exams if you're not a big textbook learner it's totally okay i would just say to use the textbook right when you are reviewing for an exam i don't care if you don't like to use the textbook before the lecture or after the fact or whatever but use it now i'm pretty sure every single anatomy and physiology class uses the same textbook but at the end of each chapter they have these chapter summaries which are totally helpful they're usually like a page to two pages long and they sum up everything topic by topic so once you've already learned everything you've memorized what you need to know you've understood the different paths of physiology and all that stuff go onto the summary page and just basically read it through also try to like reteach yourself and elaborate so like if I'm reading the summary and it's talking about the renin angiotensin system I'll kind of try to be like okay what's the vasoconstrictor in that system and then I'll I'll try to just elaborate even if it's not written in the textbook just do it just do it read the summaries it's amazing amazing it's amazing if you guys are doing the mastering a and p which is basically like online homework assignments that go towards your final grade that website has a lot of resources on it it has like little modules i'm hoping that's how you pronounce the word i don't know and like little activities study areas all this stuff and i would definitely recommend that you guys take advantage of it and you use it after all you've paid for access to mastering NP, why not just use it to the fullest? Get your money's worth. It really, really helps, especially with the physiology. Personally, when it came to the regulation of the kidneys and all that stuff, I really found that that helped me a lot, as well as just the circulatory system in general. I kind of struggled in that area, so the modules and all that stuff really, really helped me on that. We're gonna talk about diagrams. Diagrams take up a really, really big part of anatomy and physiology. It's not only gonna be the anatomy portion that has diagrams, but also the physiology. I had so many any diagrams about the nephron in a and p3 when we're learning about the renal system and like it was just a lot going on and my brain was like gonna explode the way i keep track of my diagrams is i get a new powerpoint a new slides new keynote presentation whatever you guys use and i start screenshotting from my slides all the diagrams and i start putting them all into this one mega 
master slideshow and then I will go through it all one time before the exam and I will actually draw them out and test myself. I'll study with a friend. You guys can actually see that in one of my like week in my life videos. The thumbnail is actually me literally drawing a diagram. It's pretty time consuming so get a head start on it but it really really helps. For uh, some classes like for ANP2 it was a lot of muscles and joints and ANP1 when I was learning about like the major arteries and veins in the body I actually learned that on my person so I would be like okay this is ulnar, this is radial, this is cephalic, basilic for all like the arteries and the veins, all that. I'm a little bit rusty, but you're not going to forget it if you practice it on yourself. And then lastly, practice questions. Sometimes you'll be lucky and you'll be able to find old midterms online. And if you do, definitely look at those. But sometimes you can't, so look up practice questions for whatever topic. So if it's homeostasis of the body, search it up in Google and you will find a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff. For some topics, obviously there's more out there than others but there's at least gonna be two to three different things that you can look at and that you can resort to. You can also make your own practice questions if you have time, but if not, always using somebody else is also a great way to learn. I actually really started to use this website called Quizzes. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. I didn't know about it until this semester, but they have like a ton of practice quizzes that people make either for themselves or a lot of the time teachers make it for their students. And I found a lot of really helpful little practice questions and things like that on there. And me and my friend will do them all the time. We do them together we do them alone and it's just super duper helpful because you haven't made the question so you don't really know what to expect but you're still kind of exercising your brain to recall that information and lastly I'm gonna finish this video off with just a couple of little tips and tricks and little tools that I definitely recommend for studying anatomy and physiology number one you got to be organized this is a really big thing with anatomy and physiology you have assignments personally at U Ottawa we don't do labs so that's not a component but I know for some nursing schools it is so you're gonna have to take that into consideration midterms exams if you have any projects and assignments homework and stuff it's a lot be organized get a calendar with that make sure that you are setting up a plan to study every single day so every single day just study a little bit so that way you don't leave things until the last minute this is definitely easier said than done and i'm totally guilty of leaving things until the last minute and then freaking out and then having like seven hours of sleep over three days which is not healthy but distributive practice is going to be your best friend do it study a little bit every day and when it comes to actually reviewing and studying for the exam you're going to find the information is going to come a lot easier you're going to already know a lot of it number two discuss these topics with people discuss what you don't understand with people whether they're your classmates whether they're your friends even me when I was learning um, a lot of the physiology I would actually talk to my family about it so I just go to my dad and I would just tell him things like about blood pressure regulation or about the urinary system and the process of micturition like all that stuff I would literally just sit there talk to him about it until I would flawlessly be able to talk top to bottom about a certain process and that was a really really effective way of studying and actually retaining the information even email your prof if you're not sure or go to office hours that's something that I didn't really do in my first semester but it's really helpful they have office hours for a reason why are you not going if you need help the more you talk about it the more you're actually going to understand and then the last thing and this is kind of just like a little tool I don't have mine here right now but the last thing is get yourself a little whiteboard or you can use like an iPad but for being more realistic a whiteboard is the way to go it's just a very small whiteboard you can get it for like a dollar from your dollar store it fits in my backpack super great size super convenient when I need to just practice diagrams practice labeling super cheap affordable but so so useful that basically covers everything on how i studied for anatomy and physiology i started to implement these rules and these practices for other classes as well and my grades like skyrocketed if you guys have any more questions be sure to you know leave a comment down below or shoot me a dm on instagram i am always down to talk to you guys i love talking to you guys it's really cool to me if you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload. That's all from me and I'll see you guys in the next one.